All right, so today we're going to talk about emergency procedures at camp and those situations where you may need to uh, know where your campers are and get your campers to special locations. So the four things that we're going to talk about in this video are a missing camper at camp, not at the waterfront. Uh, we will then talk about our chewy or active shooter situations at camp. Our third situation, we will talk about our uh, fire, if there was a fire at camp, and then the fourth one will be severe weather and what we do in those situations. So we're going to talk about a missing camper to start. All right, in the event you have a missing camper, first and foremost, most groups, or all groups, are not, are not going to have any more than 10 campers in it, and you're going to have two counselors with your group. So hopefully we don't have to have any missing campers this summer up at the camp area. But if we are in a situation where somehow you are missing a camper because maybe they slipped out and went to the bathroom and you didn't notice it, um, we will certainly have to go into our missing camper procedure at that point. Mm -hmm. When we start a missing camper procedure, you will, if you notice that you have a missing camper, you will then go to the camp office and you will let Renee know or Ari know at the office that you have a missing camper and you will need to give a full description of that camper. You know, do your best to know what they're wearing. Uh, you know, obviously give us their full name, what group you're in. And then from that point, Renee will make a, a overhead announcement that will say this. All specialists to the office. All right, so as mentioned, uh, a missing camper at camp, in the camp area, not at the camp waterfront, um, will have three phases. So phase one um, should last two minutes. So once you recognize or realize that you have a missing camper, you should not try and go find them on your own. You should report immediately to the camp office um, and report your camper missing. Uh, at that point, the uh, camp waterfront will be alerted and Dunning Lake waterfront will be alerted that we have a missing camper up in the camp area. And at that point, Renee will call all specialists to the camp office. Really important at this point is to make sure that you do not take it upon yourself to try and find the camper. You need to come to the camp office immediately so then we can get our specialists to start helping search for the missing camper. All right, phase two of a missing camper uh, should last no longer than approximately eight minutes. Um, at that point, the specialist will come to the office, they will grab their running card, they will have a description of the camper and the camper's name, and they will then begin their search while they shout the camper's name, um, searching for that missing camper. Uh, we will make sure that, as we mentioned earlier in the video, that you as a counselor of a group that does not have a missing camper will certainly count your campers, uh, making sure that you don't have extra campers at this point. Um, and you will just kind of be on alert and kind of help out, but you will not be initiating a search on your own. Um, very important that specialists continue to search their areas until a camper is found. Um, coordinators will be in, in the different locations, letting them know if we have found the camper yet or not. Um, if we do not find the camper within eight minutes, at that point, we'll then get ready to move into phase three. Um, towards the end of phase two, the main gate is closed. Uh, maintenance is contacted and we start our trail system search from that point. And then finally, right before we move into phase three, 911 will be called and we will notify the main office. Then right. our third phase of a missing camper here at Winding Trail Summer Day Camp, um, we have an emergency team. So that is our full-time staff will meet at maintenance, which is our headquarters to then coordinate our search and our communication from that point on. Um, phase three, we are contacting the camper's parents. Um, and then we are coordinating an extended search with local you know, fire and police at that point. Um, a Walton, Walton Pond will be searched with a full line search, which again is coordinated with the police department and the fire department. Um, but at phase three, all camp groups will then be asked to return to their units, which is not on this slide, but phase three, all camp units will be asked to return to their units at that point and until camper is found. Um, obviously, we never want to get ourselves to a phase three. Um, worst experience of you know working with children is not being able to find, um, have to call a parent and say that we have lost your camper. So please, please, please be extra vigilant. I mean, I'll keep reiterating the fact, as I said all along, you have 10 campers in your groups, so you shouldn't have missing campers this summer. Um, however, don't be embarrassed if you do, for some reason, have a missing camper. I think it's really important that, you know, there's no stigma attached to, you know, having a missing camper. It's in the best interest of the camper for you to come and report it to the office. You know, we will certainly have a conversation after the fact, but in the moment, uh, please uh, do your due diligence and come to the camp office and report them missing. Um, but again, um, make sure that you are continuously counting your kids every time you enter an activity and every time you leave an activity, which will certainly help and you should not have missing campers this summer at Winding Drills. All right, so next for us is if we have an active situation at the camp office, um, people call it an active shooter, but it could be any sort of disturbance that we want to get campers away from the camp office as quickly as possible. So we call it our Chewy Drill. 
So what'll happen in this situation, you will hear Renee say, Chewy, please come to the camp office. Chewy, to the camp office. Uh, Chewy is obviously our camp mascot, so we would never call Chewy to the camp office for any reason. So you know immediately once you hear that, it's a situation you need to get your campers away from the camp general central camp area as quickly as possible. So once you hear, will Chewy come to the camp office? It it will depend on what activity you're in, will depend on where you actually go. So if you are on, this is Walton Pond, so if you were on this side of Walton Pond, so if you were at archery, nature, doing hikes over this side, boating, then you will take the path out, uh, pond trail, to Trout Pond, which will show you exactly where that site is. If you happen to be on this side of the camp, so if you're at Gaga, sports fields, arts and crafts, mountain biking, well depending on where mountain biking is, but if you're on this side of camp, you will go up to the campsites at OA and you will follow the road to get up to there and we'll show you where that location is as well. If you were at nature or boating or archery or somewhere, again, on this side of the pond, you will come up pond trail. So behind me here is pond trail. So you would have come up from this direction and you would have then walked past the meadow, which you can see right over here where we do orienteering and you're going to continue along this path and I'll show you, we'll show you where that will end up. So this is also a wonderful picnic area if you want to bring your group up here. But if we were doing our, our chewy um, get away from the office drill, we, you will continue on this path and you will take your campers to this area right here. Um, you will kind of spread out along this around the pond here. There'll be another coordinator who would check you in at this area as well. Again, not necessarily going to be your coordinator from your group, but you'll simply let that coordinator know that you have all your campers, check it off their list. And again, once they give you the all clear, uh, then you will be allowed to return back to the camp. Campsite. So if again you were on that side of camp and you came up to the campsite area, this is where you will end up. You can certainly space yourself out in this area over here. There will be a coordinator. Um, it might not be your exact coordinator from your group, lower, middle, upper, but there will be coordinators here. And what they will be doing is checking off and you will check in with them to make sure you have all your campers. So if Chris, the lower camp coordinator was up here, he would say, you know, go, if you were an Apache group, he'd be like, all right, do you have all your campers? He would check you off the list um, and then you would be all set. And then you would hang here until we hear the all clear signal, um, which would not come from the camp office. The all clear signal would come from the coordinator specifically who are here or from the police department at that point if it's a situation that we need to call the police. All right, so if you were out hiking on a trail or mountain biking or doing explore period and you were at one of our trails, like Crow's Curve, for example, uh, you may not make the decision to be able to go back to the campsite area, so you will go out to the power lines at that point. Remember, all counselors this summer on their um, clipboards will have a trail map that will be on it as well. So even though you're not hiking specifically or if you're out there on the trails for explore or free time, you will have a trail map so you can kind of assess which way I need to go. So again, at this point, if you hear that or if you can hear it or if you get that text that just simply says Chewy, from here you will proceed out to the power line. So we're going to show you how to do All right, so we are at the power lines, as you can see by the sign, but also because there are power lines on the power line trail. So if you do have to go out to the power lines because of the uh, Chewy drill, we wanna make sure that once you get to the power lines, so wherever you go, there's not one single point you'll go to. You will simply get to the power lines, you will wait with your group wherever you happen to be at, and then either Bobby or John will be driving out on both ends of the power lines and they will check your group in from there and you will stay there until Bobby or John give you the all clear to start heading back to camp. So again, if you have to go out to the power lines because you're hiking, exploring, mountain biking, get your group, find any place along the power lines, stay there, 
and wait for further instruction. Okay, so as we mentioned in the uh, Chewy, uh, will Chewy come to the camp office? We want to make sure that if you're at the waterfront area, so if you're swimming, you know, during your free swim period, and it does come over the loudspeaker and through the radios, you, if the situation is at the camp office, then you can simply stay at waterfront. What will happen is uh, Carolyn or Gwen, the uh, coordinators down here at the waterfront, will let you know you will be pulled out of the water at that point. You'll be doing a buddy check and you'll be simply sitting on the beach. If the situation is up at the camp office, we want to keep you away from that space. However, if there was a situation in Ad Dunning and something was happening in this area and we needed to get your, your camper groups out of here, we will ask that you follow and go up to the OA campsites by the climbing tower and we're going to show you how you should go to that in this video as well. Waterfront area past the street hockey up the small path you will then go up this path over here which will then take you to the OA course and you'll be able to see the climbing tower which will then take you to the campsites. The other place where you'll use this same, uh, possibly go the same way, would be if you were at Arts and Crafts and you didn't want to go by the office, you would simply come this direction from Arts and Crafts or really any of the sports fields. It's best to go up this way and to go up this trail right here and you'll see the OA course and the climbing tower. It is if we have a fire at camp. So what will happen in that situation, it's, it's a pretty simple process. So literally you go, fire, fire at Garmony. If that happens, then you will, let a coordinator know or you will get to the office as quickly as you can. You will not try to put out the fire yourself. You will make sure you're with your kids and you will go to one of three different um, emergency locations that we will explain to you in just a moment. So as I mentioned, if we did have a fire somewhere at camp, uh, we would have three emergency locations that we'd have the entire camp together. We know technically social distancing and commingling of groups are not supposed to do this summer. However, in emergency situations, we just need to do what we need to do to get campers together. So the amphitheater behind me is location, emergency location one. So if there was a fire or any other kind of emergency situation that we felt we needed to get all the camp together at one particular spot, um, we would say, you know, there's a fire at Garmony. We need you to go to, well, actually there wouldn't be a fire at Garmony and send you to location one. But if there was a fire somewhere on property and we said, please gather at loca emergency location one, then you will go to the amphitheater. You will sit your group down in the amphitheater together and have your group together from that point. We will then make sure the situation is safe and then we can send you off to your activities. All right, so again, in that fire situation or other situations where we need to get the entire camp together one place, our sportsplex, is our emergency location number two so again if there was a fire someplace in camp and we were able and we determined that this location was safe we would say please all campers and staff please report to emergency location number two which would be the sportsplex we can certainly social distance on the sportsplex and kind of spread ourselves out um, but again as mentioned in the previous location in this summer if you know we know we're trying to social distance and not commingle groups but in an emergency situation we just have to do what we have to do to keep our campers as safe as possible at that point so again sports pluck is emergency location number two all right so again um as mentioned in the fire slash emergency situation for getting campers to one location uh, we did mention that there's three locations um and you'll see it on the map that there's three different locations and one of those would have been the waterfront dunning area However, this summer, due to kind of some of the guidelines that we have to deal with at our member area, there's too many fences and too many other things going on in this space. So for this summer and this summer only, we'll be eliminating emergency location number three and just using numbers one and number two at this point for fires or any times we need to get campers together. Our situation emergency procedure at camp is if we have severe weather. Um, obviously this summer, uh, as part of our guidelines, if we have predicted se severe weather throughout the day, um, it's gonna be a long duration period. Unfortunately, we'll cancel camp for that day. So you'll get a text and an email early in the morning by 6 a.m. to let you know if camp is canceled. If we do, however, have a pop-up thunderstorm late in the day or mid-morning, uh, we can certainly still run camp, but we will go to emergency locations for that. All of our younger camper groups will be inside buildings. We can only have 10 campers inside a space at that point. So we'll make sure our lower camp groups will be inside buildings. However, our most of our middle camp and upper camp groups are gonna have to stay in their pavilions. Our pavilions are lightning protected. I know it's kind of hard to see, but on top of each pavilion on both sides, there is lightning protection. So campers and staff can stay in a pavilion, but there are some things that you do have to follow when you do that. So follow me and I'll show you what you're going to do. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that campers or staff aren't holding on to posts. Um, even though the building is, or the pavilion is lighting protected, uh, the post is a conductor. Uh, the lightning will then go through and will then go into the ground. So make sure campers aren't hugging posts and doing that sort of thing. 
but we do want, and also make sure that they're not running around. We know sometimes we get thunderstorms and we can hear thunder, we can hear lightning and it's not raining and campers, you know, don't understand why they need to be under a pavilion and they just want to run around. We need to have all campers inside the pavilion. So we want to make sure they're not touching posts, but then on the tables, what we want to make sure of is that we need them to not just sit at the table normally, we need them to actually sit on the table just like this. So their butts are going to be on the table part and their feet need to be up off the bench and just sitting essentially like this. Again, not touching the metal posts that are underneath it, just touching the wood on the bench. Um, this is how we're gonna be treating thunderstorms, pop-up thunderstorms this year. We know it's gonna be a little bit different than we've done in the past, but this is what we can do to keep campers safe. And again, our, light, our pavilions are lightning protected.